Palantir stocks down 10% and everyone's going, why? Social media is awash with explanations and they are all wrong. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to explain to you the actual reason and that this was predictable and you could have foreseen it and you could have made money out of it and you still can. So that's the whole thing here, isn't it? So let's jump straight into it. Felix here. Before we do, I'm a huge believer in education. For that reason, we're running a live trading training on Wednesday and 500 people will learn our trading protocol. One stock, it's not Palantir, but you could do this on Palantir if you wanted to. Three rules, completely automated, takes you less than an hour a day to do and we make some really nice returns. So check it out at 10 a.m. Eastern time. You got to go to felixfrenzelog slash webinar and sign up for it. Links down below. Now, is this guy responsible for the Palantir sell-off? Some might say so. The narcissist of all narcissists. Well, he said, <laughs> he said, I like these guys um, on um, about a week ago. Is that the reason? No, of course it isn't the bloody reason the stock's falling. Is it simply because the stock is up 185% year to date, which of course is glorious? Well, you could argue that a pullback is therefore due, but that's not really how it works because you do get stocks that just keep running and running and running. Yeah, you might get these temporary pullbacks, but this isn't really the real reason. Sure, it was cheaper a year ago, but you know, we were talking about it a year ago. Is it the insider sales? Is it the, oh my God, how dare they? Look at that, Shyam sold some shares and Alex Carb sold 15 million. He therefore must have lost his all faith in his company. And you know, of course that isn't true. Why not? Because he actually holds 283 million shares <laughs> in, in Palantir right now. So I think the argument that because he sold 727,000, he's no longer uh, invested in this is complete jibber. It's probably year end tax planning or, you know, maybe he just needed an extra, I don't know, what does he need? Cross country skiing outfit for $15 million? You know, you never know. But no, this is not the reason. Is it the Barron's article that's being banded about on Twitter, or should I say X, like this is the most interesting thing ever? It's basically saying that the Army data platform contract, which is like $450 million, when it gets to re be renewed, the Army might, might reduce the annual amount and might try to use some open source vendors and so on. I don't know. I mean open source and military, <laughs> I think that's a tough sell. But even if this is true, no, this isn't the reason for it either. Is it because there's no S&P inclusion in 2023? No, because I told you about that in July. If you watched my S&P inclusion video in July, everybody knew this in the market. Well, not everybody, but most people, at least everybody who subscribed to this channel knew. So no, that's not the case. The S&P took five months to include Tesla into the S&P after it was qualified. Do you think they're going to do it any quicker for Palantir? No. Uber was knocking on the door. So yes, they go for Uber. Bigger beast, right? This should happen in at the end of next quarter. So early, early April. Now, it is unfortunately a little bit more complicated. And I appreciate if I look at the engagement for this video, some people will turn off here and go, Felix, you lost me. This is boring. But honestly, this chart is what explains it. If you understand this chart, you understand this data, then your life will change forever on. It's a pretty big, bold claim, isn't it? What is this? This is Gamma. And Gamma is going to be your new friend. So we have out here lots and lots of Gamma at the $20 price. And that basically says to you that there is a whopping amount of call options at $20. You might know nothing about call options. You might have no interest in trading call options. But if you don't understand this, you'll never understand why your stock does what it does. And I'll show you where you can look this up in a second as well. So you might think, OK, Felix, $20, whatever. This is all mumbo jumbo. I don't believe a word. Well, this is the chart from the last five days. And the red line is, surprise, surprise, the $20 line. And what happens? We go above it, we peak, we sell off. We go above it, we sell off. We go above it, we sell off. We go above it, we sell off. You get the idea, right? We did that all week. And why does this happen? 
Well, you need to understand something. I'm going to write it out for you. You can take a screenshot of it and pin it on your fridge or, uh, you know, tell your date tonight. She will love you for this, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it depends on who you're dating. Uh, so, or I'm uh, married to or whatever. I tried, I told Winston and he fell asleep. But okay, what happens? Okay, say you buy a call option on Palantir. What's the effect of that? What does it mean? That means you are essentially long on a hundred shares. That's what a call option is. A call option controls a hundred shares. Where does this where does this call option come from? Is there a some chap down the road, Tom, who sells it to you? No. There is somebody called a market maker who creates the option. He writes the option. He sold you the call option. What does that mean? It means he is short 100 shares. Palantir. So if the stock goes up, he loses money. He doesn't want to do that. Market makers, and we've got, literally got two of them on our coaching team. They're the, the guys on the trading floor, you see, right? The, um, they don't take any risk. So what do they do instead? Well, what they do, the second that they sold you this call option and they are now effectively short the stock, they buy a hundred shares of Palantir or thereabouts. And what therefore happens when you now sell? So now Palantir goes to 20 bucks, it goes up. So your call options are making money. And the natural instinct when things make money is to sell them, right? That's kind of why you do it. That's why you, you do it. And as I'll show you just how many there are, monstrous amounts of them. So what, what happens then? Well, the market maker, who sold you the call option, gets the call option back, but he owns those hundred shares of Palantir here. Remember that he bought to limit his exposure, his risk to zero. What does he do? Well, now he's going to have to sell those 100 shares. So the market maker now sells 100 shares. And that's exactly what you see happening here again and again and again and again. You, you go above 20, people take profits on their call options, they sell them, and therefore the market maker sells. And you keep getting this like pressure every time you get slightly above 20, the market sells off. And then it did it massively at the end of the day. That's actually what happens. And you might be thinking, ah, I'm still confused. Well, look, we actually built a tool. It's called optionswatch.io. I'll put the link down below as well. It's a free trial for it. You can look it up. And what you can do is you can actually see in green here where the call options are positioned. The green lines are the call options. If they're the really big, then there's a lot of them there. And if you go out here to the end of J January, for example, you look at the OI, open interest. Okay, you can't see that. Let me make this a little smaller and do that again. So you just click on that and then you see here there's 73,000 of them. Now, 73,000 call options control 7 million shares. And that's just one, one expiration date. And there are lots of them. So that's exactly what happened. So it's not really a surprise. It's just a major resistance line. We didn't get through it. Can you get through them? Yes. But if they're massive, like this one is, it's very, very hard. But there is some better news. It definitely wasn't this. Shayam posting this. If you haven't seen this tweet, I wanted to show it to you saying, Palantir's basically goggles uh, in action with the 2nd Cavalry Regiment at a recent exercise. And let's have a look at how cool that stuff looks. So look at that. They are inside what I think is a C-17. I might be wrong on that. Some of you guys will know a lot more about that than me. And they can see, they have just unlimited screen space, right? And they can see live drone footage and everything. The whole world's worth of data. This is obviously all virtual reality. There is no table here. There's no map. It's all, all up there. And to me, it looks like it's inside this thing. So the insanity, you see, doesn't it look like, doesn't it look like the same? Pretty similar, at least. The insanity that you be able to do this while up in the air and your command and control center can be flying about is just the next level. So what would I say to you? Look, you just got to learn how the stuff works.
Come and join me on Wednesday. I'll teach you a great deal for free. Give you our trading protocol, our system and everything else. It's completely free. You just got to save, save yourself a seat because they do run out. FelixFriends.org slash webinar. And, and uh, let me know what your um, original thought was on Palantir's stock price movement. Maybe you think I'm wrong. I'd love to hear it, honestly. I, I love people who disagree with me. And um, it makes us smarter. That's what the whole community is uh, all, all about. So I love you for watching. Thank you very much. Share this if you think it's insightful. And see you on the next one.